ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم Just a reminder, inshallah ta'ala, from myself and everyone for 20 minutes or 25 minutes, inshallah ta'ala. First and foremost, there is something that brought us together in this masjid, in the house of Allah. It's the qadr of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed this matter 50,000 years before the creation of the human beings and the heavens and the earth. So this is by the qadr of Allah, that we are present here. But the actions that comes within our own selves, why do we come to the masjid? Why do we want to attend gatherings where the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned and the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, are being mentioned? It should be sincerely for the sake of Allah, with ikhlas, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And no other reason for anything that we get together, especially with matters of deen, except to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And seeking the pleasure of Allah, seeking the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the hereafter. We seek rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. For us to enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah prepared for the believers and to save ourselves from the hellfire. This is the objective, this is the goal. And then we need to really understand the path that we need to be upon so that we reach this destination in peace and at ease. There's only one way, one path for the people to enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be protected from the hellfire. The one that is the first to enter the Jannah is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the first one to enter Jannah and people will be behind him from his ummah. Once he was sent as the final messenger of Allah, he is the messenger of Allah of the entire world since his time till the day of judgment. Nuh السلام, was sent to his people. So he is their prophet, the prophet of the people, those who were around him in his community and, and Ibrahim السلام, and Musa and Isa and so on. But Muhammad وسلم, he was sent to all mankind. So he is the messenger of Allah that people ought to follow. And he's the first one to enter Jannah and people will follow him. Those who believed in him, those who followed him in this life, they would follow him to enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to make our path being steadfast upon the deen of Allah till we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the concern that we should all of us have at all times and it should not escape our hearts whatsoever. قُلْ أَمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقِمْ Say, I believe in Allah, then استقم, then be steadfast. Be upon the straight path till you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَا اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبِشِيرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوعَدُونَ Indeed, those who say, our Lord is Allah, رَبُّنَا الله, our Lord. And once you recite, when you're reciting the Qur'an, and we should all put the effort to recite the Qur'an on a daily basis to understand and to reflect upon it. Every time you say, Rabbuna, our Rabbukum, our Rabbu samawati wal ard, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Rabb. And that should have an effect in our hearts, which is, means, which means that He is the Rabb, He is the Lord, He is the Creator, the Sustainer, the Owner of all things. Malik, everything and he is Malik and he is the one that is the sovereign of this life and in the hereafter and everything is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the hearts are only attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore he is the only one worthy of worship so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna ladhina qalu rabbuna Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord therefore he is the only one worthy of worship and that's the tawheed of Allah that takes the person from al-kufr to al-iman is to, to say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, there is no one worthy of worship. 
every act of worship we do is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's the only one worthy of worship. So this is al-iman and what that is basically with all matters of al-iman. ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا Then they were steadfast upon the straight path which is the deen of al-Islam. The way of the Prophet ﷺ, the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The angels will come down unto them when at the moment of death. So they lived a life with an iman and an istiqama, steadfast upon the deen of Allah, till the moment of death comes, which is the most fearful moment in anyone's life. The, the moment that everybody runs away from, and the person would spend all of his wealth and put all the effort to push that away as much, as long as he can, but it's inevitable. Everybody has to face that moment. No matter how long we live, we all, we, we, we will all die and everybody shall return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the reality that nobody can deny whatsoever. كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ Every soul, ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ will taste death. And since this uh, verse is mentioned, you know, a ذوق is to taste something. And a ذوق or tasting something is a very unique personal experience. You cannot really explain to someone else what are you tasting unless they have tasted it before. So for example, if you're explaining to someone, uh, you tasted a fruit that is not common among the people, mangoes for example, right? Someone never ate mangoes before, you would say it tastes nice and sweet and it tastes like this, right? So a person would kind of relate to what you're talking about. But if it's something that no one ever have the like of it or never seen the like of it, it's a very unique personal experience. So, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ Every soul shall taste death. Nobody is able to tell us how death tastes like. It's a personal experience. So every nafs, every soul will taste death. Everybody will die. And since this is a fact, what really matters is at the moment of death, which is the most fearful moment, it becomes the most joyful moment for the believers. Because the angels will come down to them and would say to them two things as it's mentioned in the verse, that basically the keys of all happiness and gives them the perfect comfort and sakina and tranquility and happiness. Allah takhafu wa la tahzalu. Two things, don't fear and don't grieve. Don't fear of what's coming ahead, going forward after death, whether the angels of mercy will take the soul, angels of punishment, he's going to be punished or rewarded. So don't fear of what's coming ahead. And don't grieve of what you're leaving behind in this world. Family, children, wealth, whatever it is. Don't grieve. So these two things, what's coming ahead and what you're leaving behind, that is the glad tidings that is given to the person at the moment of death. All of that is because of what? إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ استقام. Then they were steadfast upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very briefly, and it's a, this is our entire life is about this. So it's just a, a quick reminder how to be among those who are mentioned in this verse. We need to make sure that we understand and learn the matters of Al-Iman. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ and as the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, that also explains this verse, this man that he came to the Prophet والسلام, and he said to him, قولاً, Tell me something in the religion of Islam, one statement, I would not ask anyone after you, O Prophet of Allah, about it. Something very precise, something very clear, something for us to take with us and it becomes the principle that we live our life according to it. He said, قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقِمْ Say, I believe in Allah, and then استَقِمْ Then be steadfast, be firm upon the straight path. And the word قُلْ, it does not mean just to say it with your speech and that's it. قُلْ, that means say it with your tongue and be upon it with your heart, and then act upon what you believe in. So for us to learn what Al-Iman is, the pillars of Al-Iman, what makes a person a believer uh, that distinguish him from being a disbeliever. The six pillars of Al-Iman, for example, to believe in Allah and the last day and the angels and the messengers and the books and the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to understand and to believe the matters of Al-Iman that takes the person from deviation 
to be among the people of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, to learn the matters of Al Iman that the Ummah may be split in, that caused some sects to be deviated. We need to learn the matters of Al Iman to keep us firm upon the deen that was present at the time of the Prophet والسلام, and the companions عنهم, and the early generations of Al Islam. Because the Prophet والسلام, he said, Whoever lives among you, he would see many, many differences. So then he said, والسلام, Be upon my way, my sunnah. And the way of the rightly guided Khalifa after me, Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali, bite on it with your molar teeth. Shows that someone would try to pull it away from you, be firm. Be steadfast upon this and be warned against the newly introduced matters. Every introduced matter in the religion is bid'ah innovation in the religion, and every bid'ah in the religion, innovation in the religion is astray, and every astray is in the hellfire. So, to perfect our iman, to perfect our aqidah, and that requires for us to learn. The aqidah is not something that we get to know by default. I'm a Muslim, so I have the correct aqidah. No, we have to learn it. Matters of unseen is unseen to us. So how would we know the unseen? We have to learn it from the wahi, revelation from Allah, the Quran, and the sunnah of the Prophet, Then al-istiqama, to be steadfast upon these matters of al-iman and actions by following the way of the Prophet, The actions that we do in this life as we know that there are three, let, three levels or maratib of this entire deen. Mentioned in the hadith of Hadith Jibreel, السلام, when he came to the Prophet, السلام, he asked him about Al-Islam, Al-Iman, Al-Ihsan. Al-Islam, to submit yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be a Muslim. And then you do the acts of obedience to Allah, then it gets you into the level of Al-Iman. For someone to have that Iman, the level of Al-Iman, and the Iman increases and decreases. Increases with the good deeds and decreases with the bad deeds. And the more the person is steadfast upon matters of Al-Iman, actions, because actions from the Iman, deeds done by the heart from the Iman, what we say, what we act upon, till a person reaches the level of Al-Ihsan, which is the highest level in the deen. And Al-Ihsan literally means goodness, to do things with goodness. But the Prophet ﷺ defined it in a way that if you go to the East and the West and if you look at every single book that is written on the face of earth, it would never give you a definition to the word goodness, how to perfect your actions like this. Because this is from Allah and the Prophet ﷺ taught this ummah how to be upon al-ihsan, how to be upon what, what is good, to perfect one's actions. How to do this? He said, أَن تَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكَ That you worship Allah as if you see Allah. Before we continue, imagine that when you're coming to the masjid, when you're sitting now, when you prayed Salatul Maghrib, you are seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How would your ibadah be? How would our hearts be? With the fear of Allah, with the hope for the rewards from Allah, with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perfectly devoted in our ibadah, in our worship, and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you don't see Allah, because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be seen in the hereafter, no one is allowed to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. Even the Prophet والسلام, when he ascended in the night of Al-Isra' wal miraj when he was asked والسلام, did you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it's mentioned in the hadith in Sahih Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah he said nurun anna ara light anna ara how can I see him he saw the light which is the hijab what's between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his khalq and in the day of judgment, this hijab of a nur of the light will be uh, removed for the believers to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the believers, when they see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah, this is the ultimate joy. Nothing else is as joyful as looking and seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because nothing is the like of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, the, the Prophet alayhi salatu when, uh, when uh, with matters of al-ihsan, that imagine that you are worshipping Allah and doing things as if you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How joyful this life would be 
it will be such a, a joyful thing. And that's why when Isa alayhi salam comes down at the end, one of the signs of the hour, that Isa alayhi salam will descend, right? And uh, the good deeds, as is mentioned in the hadith, will be more beloved to the people than anything else because the matter is very clear. And for the believers, they don't need to wait for such a thing because their hearts are full of the Iman and the love of Allah and the fear of Allah and the hope for the rewards from Allah. And they're constantly reading the Quran and being attached to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. So when the, uh, the, the level of Al-Ihsan is, is in such a way, and if you don't see Allah, as it says, uh, that if you don't see Allah, which is the norm, which is the fact in this life, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing you. And that is sufficient for the believer. You know that Allah is watching you. You know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing you. Not just seeing you like a human being is seeing you. We can deceive one another. You can look at me and say, MashaAllah. I can look at you and say, MashaAllah. Brother is upon the deen, upon the sunnah, making salah. And we are only to judge what we see with our own eyes. We're not supposed to, to, to say that in the heart of that person is this or that. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in the hearts. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sees our hearts and he sees our physical actions and he knows us and he knows who deserve to receive the mercy of Allah and who deserve to be punished. Rabbukum a'lamu bikum. In yasha' yarhamkum aw in yasha' yu'adhibukum. Rabbukum, your Lord, the one that created you, he a'lamu bikum, he knows you best. He's the one that knows you best. In yasha' yarhamkum. If he wills, he will have mercy upon you. And if he will, he will punish you. No one is to question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the will of Allah is not just like the will of a human being and it's such a, an ignorant thing with all due respect when human beings are so arrogant and they try to explain the actions of Allah according to the actions of the wicked human beings, the deficient human beings, the ignorant human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing is the like of him. So whoever received the mercy of Allah, he deserves to receive the mercy of Allah. By the will of Allah, the will of Allah is based on his mercy, on his knowledge, on his justice, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that beyond what we even think. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, he will punish based on the knowledge of Allah, the justice of Allah, and so on. But the fact is, your Lord, he knows you best. And that's why Allah, the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, Inna Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa la ila ajisamikum wa lakin yanzuru ila qulubikum wa amalikum. Allah indeed does not look at your uh, suwarikum, your image, and not your physical body. It doesn't matter. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you big or small, black or white, this is not something that you earned. And that also shows the foolishness of the human beings. When they start feeling superior or inferior because of the color of a skin or because I was born here versus someone born somewhere else, this is so ignorant. When someone would feel that he's better or superior from something that he did not earn it to start with. And, the, we, and we're all the creation of Allah, right? But rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees what's in your hearts and your actions. He sees your hearts and your actions and this is what matters. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in our hearts. So without, uh, you know, having, when we say we can deceive one another, but no one can deceive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why to be steadfast upon the deen of Allah is not just about the physical actions. It's about what's in the heart. So when we say we're here sincerely for the sake of Allah, Allah knows best. And we need to work on our sincerity, our ikhlas, our sidq, our truthfulness, our true love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our fear of Allah, hoping for the rewards from Allah. Because this is all deeds done by the heart. Once this is there and matters of belief is strong, then the easiest thing for the believers are the actions, the physical actions. And the physical actions, we have capacities, we have limitations as human beings. Some people are able to pray standing. Some people are able to pray standing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. But when it comes to the heart, if we are alive, there's no such a thing as someone has a stronger heart than someone else. We're all equal in this. It doesn't matter how strong physically you are or weak or whatever. We all have the same hearts. That means we all have to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to hope for the rewards from Allah, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be pleased with Allah, to have patience. To have what well, all these types of actions to be done with our hearts and before that the matters of belief. When it comes to the physical actions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful according to our limitations. 
But if there is truthfulness, a person would do the best he can. So, uh, the istiqama or to be steadfast upon the deen of Allah with these levels of the deen, al-Islam, wal-Iman, wal-Ihsan, to the extent of which that before we say a word, we're praying together, people are interacting with one another. We're not just supposed to say whatever we wish to say. Some people think that it's a good thing if even people say that. What's in my heart, it's on my tongue. I don't hide anything. They think this is a good thing. That's not a good thing. Not everything in your heart, you have to say it. You know, if you don't, if you don't feel comfortable with someone, you have to go tell them, I don't feel comfortable with you. Or you say something against them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ لِعِبَادِي يَقُولُ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ يَنْزَغُ بَيْنَهُمْ Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لِعِبَادِي to my servants, my slaves, the believers. يَقُولُ They say, الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ what is most perfect and the best, ahsan. Not to say al-husna, not to say good words. No, say what is best. So that means when you're about to say something, you have bad and good. This is obvious. Don't say what is bad, say what is good. That requires knowledge, of course. And then when it, when, when it comes to what is good, there is good and there is better or the best. You say the best. You're commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say the best to the best of your ability, of course, and that requires knowledge because forbidding the evil might be something that a person doesn't like to hear. But this is what is best, to enjoy good and forbid evil. So that requires knowledge. So to the extent of which our speech, our actions, the way we talk and walk and act, we, we have an example which is the Prophet ﷺ. All of that, to bring it together, uh, we might be overwhelmed because we're weak as human beings. So how to perfect al-istiqamah and steadfastness with all of these actions when we take it upon ourselves that our life is to follow the example of the Prophet والسلام, We need to attach to this a tawbah to constantly repent to Allah, to be steadfast upon a tawbah If we take from this short talk, inshallah ta'ala, this important uh, matter of al-istiqamah, when people talk about al-istiqamah, or to be steadfast, or to be consistent, they talk about actions, which is good, definitely. This has to be done. Istiqamah in your salah, in your ibadah, in your deeds, in reciting the Qur'an, in following the way the Prophet ﷺ. But also as important as this, is to make istiqamah upon a tawbah, that you're constantly in state of repentance to Allah. So constant, never leave this subject of a tawbah. Because either you are a ta'ib or a zalim, either you are a repentant slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or, or you are a wrongdoer, or you are an unjust person. So constantly repenting to Allah, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. If a person slips away and commits a sin, we're not commanded to be sinless, but rather we are commanded to be constantly repenting to Allah. If you add to this what has been mentioned, the truthfulness, the sincerity, and then constantly repenting to Allah and al-tawbah, is a subject that requires ilm. There's ahkam, rulings for tawbah. How to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are the conditions for it? What are the pillars of tawbah as it's mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Are all the sins the same? If someone committed a sin that has to do with other human beings, how to relieve oneself from the consequences of the sin? If a person steals money, how can he repent to Allah? Can he just steal a million dollars and say, oh Allah, forgive me? And he keeps it in his pocket. This is not su sufficient unless he has to return the money back. In what way? It doesn't matter as long as he returned the money back and so on. So there's rulings and that's why we ask the people of knowledge. So to be steadfast upon the tawbah, repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to put all these principles together, this is how a person or a believer uh, pass this uh, short life that we live on the face of earth. It's only one time, one chance on the face of earth and then everybody shall return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And especially that we don't choose the time that we live in. So if it's times of fitan, tribulations and trials and so on, that's by the justice of Allah. And the Prophet والسلام, the most frequent dua that the Prophet والسلام, used to say, Allahumma muqallib al qulub thabbit qalbi ala deenik. O oh Allah, the changer of the hearts, make my heart steadfast upon your religion. The religion of Islam is the most valuable thing in our life. If we read the Quran, if you understand the religion of Islam, everything in this life is nothing compared to the value of this deen. 
the value of this religion, your life, your flesh, your blood, your wealth, your family, the most valuable thing in this life, if you put it in one side, and the religion, your deen, to be steadfast upon the deen of Islam, it's not even a, a, a subject of comparing or choosing. Definitely the deen comes first. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated that clearly in many verses in the Quran, and the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, and the life of the prophets that is stated in the Quran, the life of the Prophet وسلم, But all of that requires ilm, requires knowledge. It's not just an emotional feeling that a person gets, but with the knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah, and to be firm upon this on a daily basis, to learn from the authentic sources, and to constantly repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala till we all return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us steadfast upon the deen of Allah, and to make us truly followers of the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam. Jazakumullah khayran wa barakallahu feekum.